Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. Today I'll be making one of our fall favorites, which is a traditional pumpkin pie with cinnamon cream. This recipe is also keto, sugar-free, and gluten-free. The macronutrient ratio for this recipe is 3.5 to 1 with 6.1 grams of total carbs, 0.8 grams of dietary fiber, which results in 5.3 grams of net carbs. The stated macronutrients includes the cinnamon cream, but please note that this recipe does not have a crust, and quite frankly, you don't need one. Before beginning, preheat your oven to 220 degrees Celsius or 440 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's get started. On this table, I have assembled all the ingredients needed to make this pie. On the right hand of the screen, you will see the individual spices I used. As an alternative, you can buy a pumpkin spice mix, but remember, each spice company manufacturer will use their own formula, so each will have their own taste. If you're buying canned pumpkin puree, read the label and make sure you get a can that the only ingredient listed is pumpkin puree. To a medium bowl, add all your eggs, and with a fork, stir to break the yolks and combine with the whites. You don't want to add any air to the egg mixture at this point. Now add the pumpkin puree and whisk together slightly just to combine. Once everything is well combined, pour the heavy cream into a bowl. Add the sweetener of your choice, but make sure that it has a fine texture or, or if it's coarse, then grind it to a confectionery stage. But measure it out before you grind it. Add the cinnamon, the lemon zest, ground nutmeg powder, ground ginger, ground clove powder, and salt because salt enhances the other flavors. With a whisk, stir until well combined. Make sure that the liquid is homogeneous. As you stir with your whisk, don't add air. You're not trying to make it airy and fluffy. It will depend on which sweetener you're using, whether you'll have to adjust and add a little more sweetness to this mix. But be careful with how much more sweetener you add as the pie bakes, the sweetness will come out and be more noticeable when it's done. This pumpkin pie is not meant to be overly sweet, but to be light and flavorful with a delicate balance of all the spices and flavors. If you add too much sweetener, this will overpower the other tastes. So depending on which sweetener you've chosen, you may or may not need to add more sweetener. Before proceeding, I had two eager volunteers to taste for sweetness. As I mentioned earlier, there are commercial brands of pumpkin spice mix. Here's one that I use on occasion, mostly for other recipes. But for my pumpkin pie, I like to control the flavor profiles, so I prefer to add the individual spices as indicated in my recipe. The pan I prefer to use is a 24 centimeter or nine and a half inch springform pan that I have pre-lined both the bottom and the side with parchment. To help the side parchment stay in place as I pour in the batter, I grease the sides of the pan with butter or coconut oil and then place the parchment. Now the parchment stays in place. This nifty little step makes it much easier because the parchment stays in place as I pour the pumpkin filling into the pie pan. Just wanted to share that tip with you. Also I would like to mention that this pie does not need a crust and can be poured directly into the parchment lined pan as I'm doing here, but if you prefer you can use a crust. I wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to make this flavorful, creamy pumpkin pie. Whichever way you choose to make this pie, you'll find that it tastes amazing. Also, I'd like to really emphasize there are two temperature settings for this recipe. Please follow the instructions for best results. After you've poured your pumpkin pie mix either into your parchment lined baking sheet or your pie crust, drop it gently on the counter a couple times to get rid of air bubbles. When you have done that, Place your pie into the middle position of your preheated oven and set the timer for 15 minutes. At exactly 15 minutes, and without opening the door, reduce the temperature setting to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for another 30 to 35 minutes. For removing the pie from the oven, test for doneness by inserting a toothpick or spatula at about one and a half inches or 3.8 centimeters from the rim. Just beyond that darker area is where you want to test. Remove the pie from the oven and set it on a cooling tray. Note that the rim area is darker brown and seems more done than the center. 
and the center of the pie will still be jiggly and appear lighter in color and seem that it's not done. The pie filling will continue to cook the pie as a result of its own heat. So when the pie has cooled, loosen the spring form pan and carefully remove the sides of the pan. Then peel off the parchment. Because you want this pie to cool slowly on your counter, make sure you plan and make this ahead of time because you'll need about 46 hours to let the pie rest before serving. Ideally, it's a very good idea to make both the pie and the cinnamon cream the day before. Although this pie will taste great to serve the same day, you'll find that it'll taste even better the next day. Do not refrigerate until the pie has completely cooled on the counter. This is really important and only add the cinnamon swirls shortly before you're ready to serve. The basis for the cinnamon cream is the stabilized whipping cream frosting. I have previously made a video on how to make stabilized whipped cream frosting and I've added an end link for your convenience. The only difference between the stabilized whipped cream frosting in the video and this particular version is I used exactly half of all the ingredients and at the point where I added the vanilla I also added cinnamon powder. And then I continued whipping the cream at high speed until the firm peak stage. Now I'm ready to serve so I'm going to place my cinnamon cream into a piping bag into which I've placed a large decorative tip. I'm going to make six to eight swirls on the outside edge of the pie as shown as my decoration. Enjoy. Thank you for watching and see you next time. You will find the printable recipe in the description below.